welcome back folks to my video diary if this is the first time that you're tuning in then welcome you're just about to watch a millennial 30 something year old woman talk to herself and try and find out why she's in a rut i hope you enjoy my friend from another country she sent me a voice note this morning and she asked me why do i not feel sexy <laughs> And it really got me thinking. I couldn't really give her an answer. I think mean, right now I don't feel sexy. I haven't even had a shower. I know, disgusting, whatever. I haven't felt sexy in a long time. I just don't have that confidence. I don't crave male attention. And should I get male attention? It makes me feel sick. Looking back on this video, I can see what's affecting me. It's happened more than once where a man thinks it's okay to be inappropriate with me, even when I'm with my boyfriend or my husband. And also other people's partners feel that it's okay to be inappropriate with me. And it's left me feeling bitter and makes me feel a bit sick, to be honest. What also is highlighted to me whenever I'm talking about sexiness, I automatically bring men into it, which I'm getting pissed off about because sexiness is not about being sexy for a man. It's about being sexy for me. This is something I'm definitely gonna work on. And then I'm repeating shit uh, about work-life balance and I need to find it again. I keep saying this to myself. I'm fucking bored of myself. I'm really am. Saying the same shit and not doing it again. Surprise, surprise. Talking about getting older again. I have no idea what it is that I envision myself doing. I think that's why the thought of getting older scares me. I haven't prepared myself for aging. I genuinely thought I would live young forever. <laughs> But uh, I'm not going to be forever young. I didn't think about getting older. I just genuinely lived for being young. Um, and I still do. And now I've got to the point where I'm like, I am going to be old and I am getting older. I guess I'm a bit like, what? I'm just not prepared for it because I had no plans. What do people do when they get older? The only time where I've thought, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to getting old is when I, I did have a strong vision that me and Jane <laughs> were going to live in Benidorm in a caravan. I was going to be fat and I was going to be one of those people that didn't wear a bra and I'd just have my big floppy tits out. Um, but I, I wouldn't give a shit. I'd be old and saggy by then, didn't give a shit what anyone thought. Drinking cheap wine or whatever. I'd be like pure red from the sun because I'm a ginger. Just that simple life. <laughs> I mean, I don't want that now. Don't get me wrong. But when I do think about getting older, I do think that that'll do for me. I was like, I'm looking forward to not giving a shit. <laughs> Just living in the sun and not really living for anything apart from getting up, being with Jay, get me washing out. Get my wine out at wine o'clock, whenever that will be, probably about 2 p.m. Be my kid earlier. Maybe I would dress up on a Friday for bingo in my black glittery dress and my little kitten heels. <laughs> and no bra again. Just being simple, basically. Probably within the past five years, that's the only time I've thought about getting old and what it is I'm going to be doing. That'll be it. Hopefully, if it's not, fuck me, kill me now. So I just spoke to my friend who lives in another country. So she was sharing her stories of, of her battles with her weight and punishing herself, maybe her thinking that she's not sexy and should be a certain weight. And she shared a book with me that she recommends I should read by Megan Crabb body positivity or something she's uh was saying about our culture and especially our upbringing i guess as millennials we were constantly surrounded by it in magazines constantly told how we should look um particularly for men um what we should wear that suits our body and she was saying this is something that we've I guess brainwashed with and I've always thought this as well it's like I've been brainwashed and it makes me angry I am very aware of it now but the way I'm feeling 
is because of how I've been brought up and the influences around me on what um, a sexy woman is. But there's also that part of me that really does support body positivity and really does believe in it. We shouldn't give a shit about how we look. I do believe in that and I do support it. But as soon as I switch that around onto me, <laughs> just disappears. Um, I then don't believe in it and I stop following it. Well, annoying. I like my friend said, she said, it's a massive shift in mindset. This is a massive one to tackle. And it is. And I feel quite ashamed of that. I feel quite embarrassed that, that that's something that our world has put on us. Not world, but something that our society has put on us. And our culture. It makes me sad. And it makes me ashamed and, and guilty that I have followed it. Um, I've promoted it. I've done these shitty diets, I've put my body through hell <laughs> with bloody diet tablets or whatever. And I just think it's a shame that you hear a body positivity, but and you think you understand it, but actually what me and my friend were saying, we don't fully understand it. We get it. I guess we're not fully feeling it. I remember putting on a bit of weight and thinking, oh, do you know what? I don't give a shit. And I still went out there, wore the clothes I wanted, and partied, had fun. I didn't really give a shit, and it was a good feeling. It lasted about a year. <laughs> I don't know what then happened. But anyway, on that note, I am going to go to the gym. I need to get ready. <sighs> Got me pink boots on. My necklace that my sister gave me. Mm. Don't know what it means. I think it means good energy or something. have a certain thought or feeling a certain way I then it then gets highlighted in real life by someone else um, or like in a movie that I watch or something but when I was saying about um, that I I'm always relying on other musicians to support me like to play the guitar or piano but I think it's because I'm looking for a fellow musician I want someone to play guitar for me or piano I don't want to do both I just want to sing but maybe this is the powers that be saying you need to just fucking do it yourself. Get on that fucking piano and go out and play there and do it all by yourself. Stop relying on other people. All I'm doing is wasting my time where I could actually be doing it myself. And there was two women in particular that, um, who felt the same. Uh, so there was one woman who, she doesn't even play guitar. Um, so she she learned it just for this gig that she was doing, and you know she wasn't she wasn't the best at guitar at all. She was very basic at it, but she didn't give a shit. 
Um, and she sang a little fucking heart out and and she did her gig on her own, like independent woman and all that. There was another woman who, um, she does play piano, but she doesn't usually. She's always, um, she, I think she's more of a recording artist, I guess, and she gets people to play it for her. But again, she, um, she, I'd literally only learned how to play her own compositions, by the way, um, that morning of that gig. And she did crumble. It was nice seeing some vulnerability. Um, and yes, she crumbled, but I thought, fucking hell, fair play. It was new to her. She'd stepped out of her comfort zone. Um, and she really did express her vulnerability on stage. And I was saying to Jay, before watching these women, I was like, oh, it should be me up there, shouldn't it? And he's like, well, I keep telling you, you need to get up there. But I was telling him, it's tough because I've always been trained a certain way with performing. Because I went, because I studied it and I was surrounded by like really good musicians. So they were like, never have your words up on stage. I always see people have their words up on stage now. Never say sorry. Never say I'm nervous. Never say this is my first time. You go up there with confidence and you sing. Um, so that's been like drummed into my head. So that's all that I know. And that's probably why I've got high standards. <laughs> and again, it's me and the way that I've been conditioned. That's what's blocking me. So when I saw these musicians on Sunday, I was like, oh my God. And like some of them have got like EPs released on Spotify and all that. Like, you know, proper touring artists. And there's me. Fucking like nobody like thinking, oh no, I'm not good enough yet. I need to be fucking grade 10 on piano before I get out there and it's really inspired me so I'm going to start gigging again I'm going to start doing my own songs there are some other women as well who were using backing tracks to sing uh, again I always just thought that as well that's basically just karaoke like nobody does that oh, but it's me it's me being hard on myself and well being hard on other people as well I guess um, and that's why I'm not doing it. Those women really inspired me, so I'm going to go out there, sing my own songs, get a gig Not give a shit. Well, well, try and not give a shit. It's only me that's giving a shit here. I need to not give a shit what I think, because other people don't give a shit. Yesterday I felt a bit flat. I think everyone did, like my sisters and cousins and my honorary sister they were all feeling a bit meh yesterday and because i was feeling a bit meh and uh, i must have been feeling a bit meh just in general recently because jay got me some flowers you see them yeah and i thought meh and he made me dinner and i know some people are gonna be like yeah and it's like jay never makes dinner it's, well it's very very rare that he makes dinner and he made me salmon, he made me fish. He hates fish. I wasn't how to cook it, I mean, it was, it was only salmon, so it was really easy, but I thought, oh. He was dead nice yesterday. Don't know what's got into him. He's either having an affair, or having an affair, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, watch this space. I'm probably gonna go through a divorce because I'm gonna catch him having an affair, aren't I? <sighs> Isn't it a shame that that's how women think? Or is that just me? <laughs> So today was an emotional day, it was a bad one. Even at work, I just wanted to cry. And when I got in my car, I literally did just cry my eyes out. But on the way home, I was, I just started crying. But it's because there was a song that came on that reminded me of Dad. But um, we've lost dancing. Oh God. It just takes me back. weird weird time surreal I just miss my mum and dad so much I can't miss them together I just miss my home life I guess so this was triggered by a dream that I had that I was back in the family home with mum and dad and all my brothers and sisters and I just started missing everyone <laughs> I find it hard to accept Mum, without dad. 
And see, this is what I do sometimes think, what's the point? I don't want to get older. I don't want to lose mum. I don't want to lose anyone else. But that's all that's going to happen as time goes on. You're just going to keep losing people. I know you're meant to think, oh, I can think of all the good changes that are going to happen. It's like, no, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Whereas I know it's inevitable that I'm going to lose other people. And this is where I do think, I'm not suicidal, but I do think, what's the point? <laughs> What's the point going on? What am I living for? Whoa, deep man. I actually woke up singing my own song today. Surely that's a sign it's a good song. <laughs> and I need to get it finished. So within my new recruitment job, I made my first permanent placement today. Yay! And then I was walking like a surprise, surprise, and me and my good for the soul friend had some chill time. So my good for the soul friend said she wants this picture in her house. She really vibes with it. She's like, can I have that picture, but with your face on the cat? <laughs> I'll see what I can do. So I was ready to just like fucking curl up in a ball and just be fucking mongoloid. But then my friend, good for the soul friend, called me. She had a certain situation that she needed to talk about. So we spoke on the phone and I was like, oh, I was like, here we go again. I was like, we're going to talk on the phone until like midnight. And then I'm going to think I may as well have just come around. And she's like, well, I can come pick you up if you want. I was like, okay. I knew it wasn't going to be a late one because I'm fucking knackered. Um, but anyway, it was, it was so nice. She's so good, that one. As in like everything that we think and feel we just relate. I'm just getting ready for bed. She also thinks a lot about where she is in life. And she just thinks, right, okay, so I'm spending a shitload of money on my house. Doing my house up. For what? To just live in it and just be in a job. Okay, so she questions life in that way as well. And so do I. Like, I'm always thinking, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I working for? I'm working to keep this house afloat. And that's pretty much, oh, I feel that's pretty much it at the moment. Oh, oh, my uh, soul sister's calling me. <laughs> How lucky am I to have such wonderful friends? <laughs> so my soul sister called me. She was exactly the same as me in the Good for the Soul sister. We just are feeling like we don't really know what we're living for. I used to live for holidays, but now I just feel like holidays are so far out of reach at the moment. It just feels like you're constantly just trying to grab and catch this dream and it just feel so far out of reach uh, we really sound so fucking white privileged <laughs> we really do some people watching this may think fucking oh poor you white privileged girls complaining but hey is what it is that's what we're doing me and my friend my good for the soul friend we say we make each other want to do things like live our lives not just with me but she says with other people she says when I'm with people and I talk things out she says I'm ready to then live and I'm ready to do things and she says and as soon as I'm not with them I revert back being in a rut and I was like me too <laughs> and me and my soul sister as well we're saying we're just fucking fed up with ourselves I for one am fucking fed up with saying the same shit and literally listening to it back and watching it back. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm so bored of myself. I'm so bored of myself. I'll fucking do something about it then. I'm the only one that can do something about it. So just fucking do it, you fucking cunt. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Way harsh. What happened to being kinder to yourself? <laughs> I feel like... 
chicken tonight. I feel like a chicken tonight. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> for all you millennials out there. They're causing quite a stir. <laughs> I feel like chicken tonight. Like chicken tonight. Chicken tonight. <laughs> Going to the gym and then doing my music and sort my life out. Oh, are you going to do it with me? Oh. I'm really enjoying like my casual weekends of just going to the gym, dotting about the town. Which usually ends up going to a bar and having a cocktail. God, I genuinely think this bar is now my second home. log on to my Mac and start making some music. I've lost one of my books. I'm really, really upset. I've lost my folder full of my songs. I don't know where I've put them. I really pray to God that I haven't thrown out when I did that tip room. <laughs> and then maybe I've accidentally put it in a rubbish bag. <laughs> but hey, maybe that's a sign of start fresh. <laughs> Doing a course on procrastination. Oh, it's so fucking me. Fear of failing. <laughs> my old school friend, she has sent me a link to PMDD or something like that. Because um, I was explaining to her about how I think my periods are affecting my moods. And I know periods affect women all the time, but. I always wanted to know um, why at certain times of the month was I like really, really depressed or really just, oh, what is life and questioning everything. And yeah, so I'm going to have a read of that um, and see if it is that. And this is the benefit of these videos because I can see a pattern now and I'm like, oh, maybe it is my period and maybe I'm not depressed <laughs> about anything in particular. I'm just, my hormones are just fucking mental. Isn't that beautiful sunshine? <laughs> I had such a morning. I've got a fucking headache and I cannot wait to go out for a drink with my cousin. I really need it. It seems like me and my colleague um, <laughs> both feeling the same <laughs> fucked and we're ready for the weekend and what a great night I had with lots of booze so me, Jay and my cousin and her husband all went out to a gig <laughs> quite a normal occurrence and I find some random videos of me on the toilet um, often doing my makeup <laughs> and I, I don't know why but I always find it awkward coming out of the toilet using the mirror and adjusting my makeup I don't know why so I always do it on the toilet and people are like where have you been here we go here we go that's the silence men from Buffy no. We all had such a good night, but my God, were me and Jay hung over. Oh, it was so fucking worth it. Oh, bells are ringing. Oh, oh right, no one said no. What do you I had the best night at that gig. I had such a buzz, like when you feel the music flow through you. It really took me back to my university days in Brighton and Portsmouth. And then the next day, yes, we were hungover, but it was so peaceful and lovely and good vibes all round. What I have noticed recently is that when I do have a lot of alcohol, I don't get weirded out anymore and I don't get booze blues, which is great. I just get a nice basic hangover. So I woke up from a nice dream again and in my dream, I found a new place to run and it's like a magical forest. Every time I wake up from those dreams, I am miserable.
was fucked and it was a miserable day. So I did force myself to the gym because I thought every time that I've been to the gym afterwards I always feel really good and I need to remember this. And then me, Jay and his friend went for lunch together. It turned out to be a really nice morning and afternoon actually. I was meant to be meeting up with old work colleagues but I really wanted a day of just not socialising. I'm learning to put me first. Thank you all for watching my video diary and thank you to everyone who's given me advice and suggested books I should read. People who inspire me. I just want to thank you. See you next time.